I'm Eddie Conway. Thank you for joining me for this special edition of Rattling the Bars. Uh, a month or so ago, I talked to uh, people in California when there was this massive uh, spending boom, $2 billion to create prisons and jails in LA and so on. And so I want to follow up on that to see what happened. And so uh, here with me to give me an update is Diane Zuniga, and she is the statewide organizer for Californians United for a Responsible Budget. Uh, thanks for joining me, Diana. Yes, thanks for having me. Uh, could you give me an update on what's happening uh, since the last time we talked uh, with the jail, uh, the, the prison boom out there in California? So the last time we talked was on October 11th, and um, the Alley No More Jails Coalition had been successful in getting the Los Angeles Board of Supervisors to delay uh, the vote on the jail plan in L.A. County. Um, it's a $2.3 billion jail plan in Los Angeles County. Um, the coalition was successful in getting them to delay the vote based on environmental concerns. Uh, there were several environmental concerns associated with uh, one of the construction pieces, uh, which was the women's jail um, that was proposed to be built in Lancaster, which is uh, 70 miles away from Los Angeles City. We were able to get the board to delay it based on um, issues of valley fever that have increased in the Antelope Valley, which is where the jail would be located, um, and also um, issues of, of water. Um, so there were several environmental issues that the board was interested in kind of revisiting um, and understanding more. Um, and the board took about two weeks uh, to look at these issues. And two weeks later, on October 25th, uh, the LA Board of Supervisors came back together uh, to basically approve uh, two pieces of the $2.3 billion jail plan. Uh, one was they approved the environmental impact report, the final one for the women's jail in Lancaster. Um, and the second thing they did was they placed money aside to begin um, conceptually thinking about how they would want to um, build the second jail in Los Angeles County, which would replace Men's Central Jail and would be focused on um, basically providing mental health services for people that are incarcerated. Um, so they made the decision to move forward on this $2.3 billion jail plan on October 25th, despite environmental concerns um, and despite kind of human rights um, and economic concerns that the coalition in Los Angeles has had for several years. Okay, now uh, just step back for a minute. This disease, the area in which they are trying to build the women's jail, it, it, it had a disease that's partly airborne. I mean, is that still a threat in that particular area? I'm, I'm not clear why the mm -hmm. environmental board ignored that. Yeah. So valley fever is still a huge issue in the Antelope Valley. Um, it's continuously increased every year. Um, and we actually just heard uh, CURB, which is a coalition I work for, has a um, national advisory board member that is serving time in the Lancaster prison, which is basically right next to um, where the women's jail is being proposed to be built. And he recently told us in the last two weeks that two people in the Lancaster prison um, have um, contracted um, valley fever. Um, like, uh, like you were saying, valley fever is an airborne disease. Um, and basically, it exists in spores um, within desert areas, um, within dirt in desert areas. And if um, the dirt is kind of um, disrupted, if it's, you know, um, starts moving through the air, those spores could be inhaled by people. Um, and then um, most people, some people, contract valley fever from those spores if they have the valley fever fungus inside of them. Um, so it's a pretty huge issue that a lot of people in the Antelope Valley are experiencing, um, folks that are incarcerated and folks that aren't incarcerated. 
um, and um, many desert areas have not received um, the adequate um, kind of public health responses that they that you would think um, would be shared with um, these communities that are being tar that are being hit hard um, with this airborne disease called valley fever. Mm -hmm. well, well, what's the next step then? I understand a thousand women will be put in that particular prison if it's allowed to be built. What's the next step to protect them from such a situation? Uh, um, it's about a thousand six hundred women that will be placed in this facility. Mm. And they, they basically have some forms of, of uh, ways that they will mitigate the issue of valley fever. Uh, the main thing that they're proposing is that they will, um, you know, hose the dirt with with water um, to to decrease the likelihood that the um, that the dirt will rise up and that spores will be um, omitted for people to be able to breathe. Uh, we don't think that that's an adequate, um, you know, response or, or mitigation to the issue. Um, so we're still trying to push the board and push. Um, Department of Public Health and the Sheriff's Department uh, to develop concrete um, ways that women inside of these faci this facility will be protected um, from valley fever. Um, there's still a lot of conversations around what, what that is actually going to look like. Um, I think the other thing that we're saying is that, you know, we need to get people out. We need to get folks um, adequate services inside of their communities. Um, especially, you know, when we hear Sheriff McDonald, who's our head sheriff in Los Angeles County, say that there's 80 percent of the people in L.A. County jails have substance use issues and another 25 percent of them have mental health issues. So what we're also saying is why are we, um, you know, housing them in a, in a jail facility instead of actually providing treatment and services in their communities? And that's our real focus right now. Um, how do we keep people safe that, that might be in this new facility, but at the same time, how do we reduce populations and make sure that services are adequately provided in their own communities that they're a part of, especially when they're suffering so many things around substance use and mental health um, needs. Mm -hmm. is, is, is the results of this recent election with uh, Trump winning, is that going to have any impact on the prison boom in California? Uh, uh, and, and the ability of the citizens on the ground to resist it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to have a huge impact. And I think, um, you know, CURB, its member organizations, have been having a lot of discussions around how we collectively generate um, community power um, within uh, groups that are doing uh, kind of criminal justice reform work and folks that are doing, um, you know, immigrant justice work. Um, so I think we've already been in conversations around, you know, how we can um, merge efforts and really push back on um, capacity being built in our counties or throughout the state um, that will be used to incarcerate um, documented and undocumented folks. And um, in the case of undocumented folks, really be used to house them and then deport them um, uh, to um, their home country. Um, so we have been in conversations about that and have been trying to figure out how to make sure that the policies that we're moving forward and the ways that we're pushing back against jail construction is really um, collectively thinking about the stories, of, the stories of all of the folks that are impacted by policing and incarceration in our communities, um, especially in L.A. County, where we have a large amount of folks that, um, you know, are within the immigration, the immigrant population. Um, so that is something that we're thinking about and just trying to figure out how that's going to impact our collective work pushing back against this massive jail plan, given all of this pressure that might come from the federal government um, for our county and for the state to, um, you know, continue incarcerating people and um, contribute to the, to the deportation processes of people as well. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, is there anything you want to share with us? Because I want you to come back later on and give us a, another update so we can continue to follow this. But do you have anything you would like to share now before we leave? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, the coalition that I'm a part of, LA No More Jails and, and Curb, the coalition I work for, um, you know, we're really going to continue pushing back against this $2.3 billion jail plan that will likely cost our county $3.7 billion um, due to the interest that will be accrued in having to construct these facilities. Um, I think we're also thinking about how we can creatively reimagine um, what funding could be used for in our communities instead, um, or, or how we can use fundies, funding instead of it going to incarceration. Um, so uh, would love to kind of update you on what that looks like, um, but we have several different alternative budget proposals for Los Angeles County um, so that we can start creating a more adequate infrastructure of care, um, holistic care, um, mental health services, housing support, and substance use services in our communities um, so that folks don't have to rely on um, you know, going to jail to have to receive any of those services. Um, and I think in LA County and in several other counties throughout the state, a lot of sheriffs are promoting their jails as the place that will um, be safer and more humane and um, be better for communities, that a new jail is what is needed. Um, and we are really trying to debunk what sheriffs are saying and um, actually reimagine what we would need, what, what we need in our communities instead. Um, so that's going to be another part of our, um, of our long-term fight. And um, we can definitely update you all on the progress of that in, in the coming months. Um, I also encourage people to look at our Million Dollar Hoods project. If you go to milliondollarhoods.org, you can see that um, uh, just per neighborhood in Los Angeles County, how much is actually being wasted on um, arresting and incarcerating people. Um, and there's several neighborhoods that are, are Million Dollar Hoods. Um, and those are the, the direct neighborhoods that we know um, need additional resources. And that's what we're going to be fighting for. Okay, all right. Well, keep us updated and stay in touch, and thank you for joining me. Of course. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for joining Rattling the Bars.